Hello, welcome to Relax and Chat. I'm your host, Rod Gilly. Today I have the pleasure of introducing Sarah Hailstone, a Canadian writer who writes historical fiction. There's a lot of emotion in her story, so kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hi, Sarah. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Oh, just fine. For those in the audience who may not know much about you yet, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I am a writer from Madoc, Ontario. Madoc, Ontario um, is a small town um, northeast um, of northwest, sorry, of Kingston, Ontario. So between Ottawa and Toronto, um, I am a certified, I am a certified secondary school teacher. Um, so I teach history and English as well as special education. Um, and Wretched is my debut novel. Cool. All right. And uh, what publisher are you using to release Wretched? Uh, Running Wild Press. Really? Ah, have you had a pretty good experience with them? Yeah, it's been incredible so far. I'm thankful uh, to be here uh, and oh. that they accepted my manuscript. So Yeah, I have a little experience with them and I think you'll be very happy working with that press. They're very cool people. Um, let's see, Wretched. This is your debut novel, is that right? Yes, it is. Uh huh. And when is it due to be released? Uh, 2024. Okay, and so right now you have a concept cover, but you don't have an actual provided by the publisher cover is that right no i don't i have a concept cover that i have envisioned mm -hmm. um, but i'm not at that state that stage yet oh that's fine yeah i'll uh, pop a quick picture up of your concept cover during this video so people can get a quick look at just the general idea and uh we'll go from there um so let's see i think i'll ask you a couple of questions uh okay. first one is i think you said this is your third work that you produced, you've written three stories? I have. I've had multiple uh, pieces of poetry, essays, as well as short stories published. Mm -hmm. um, I'll refer to three specifically with this interview, um, as well with Wretched, so my debut novel. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, and we'll put a link down in the description for any of the stories you would like to share, whatever form they may have, and certainly we'll have any other links that you would like to have down in the description, okay? Okay. All right. And uh, so what inspired you to take it serious and become a writer? <laughs> um, I've always been a writer. Um, I've never not been writing. Um, I can't remember a time when I was not writing. Um, so throughout my studies, my university studies, um, and I would pinpoint it to the past 20 years, I've, I've been writing. I've never stopped. Um, and I studied English and history throughout uh, school. Um, and I tie that into my teaching as well as a secondary school teacher. So in English and history. So it's nice to be able to mesh my passions. Uh -huh. And uh, Wretched is a historical fiction. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, correct. Oh, awesome. Okay, I like asking this question, uh, and then I'll and then I'll let you know what my answer would be. But uh, do you consider yourself to be more of a pantser or a plotter, and why? I, my writing process, it's evolved with me as I've grown throughout the years, um, and I've developed different ways of writing. Um, I structure my outlines and my rough drafts with the skeleton of research. I always start with research. That's my comfort zone. I rarely sit down with a blank page. I always have that inspiration with me. Um, and I carve out my plot lines and characters, and they reveal themselves to me as I sort of tie together that research. Um, for Wretched, um, I wrote through the raw rough drafts, and it took me about 10 years of writing and I would sweep through that draft forwards and I would actually sweep through it backwards um, because I was able to find that I could remove myself from the emotional ties to the plot and I could look more um, within the structure and the mechanics of the writing. Uh -huh. um, for shorter pieces, I write on my phone. Um, so I open up a notes app. I have lots of notes in my notes app um, and I will save information and research into those notes. Then I'll copy and paste them over into a document when I'm ready to start rough drafting. 
Um, and I've also developed a style of writing on my phone. Um, so what I actually do, <laughs> and this is really fast because when I have ideas come to me, I can actually discreetly write while I'm working. And this is kind of funny. Um, but what I do is I take screenshots um, and the screenshots actually tie to together in a coherent plot, but it's very visual. Um, and it's a fluid way of writing. And I call this style of writing the snapbook. Um, I'm always creating, so. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. <laughs> I would think when you write historical fiction, research is a really big part of it. Oh, yes, yes, right, absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah, I like research. Uh, in recent, the last couple of years, I've been researching how to write. <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> you know, I, uh, I'm a, I was going to mention real quickly, I won't dwell on this, but I'm a 100% pantser. I sit okay. in front of a blank screen and, and I have a general idea in my mind, just mm -hmm. something I might have gotten while I was going after a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And then I just let it run. And I spend all my time typing at 40 words a minute. And I'm typing as fast as I can to try to keep up with my characters. I, they just run and I try to record mm -hmm. it. Um, that results, at least for me, in a lot of hard revisions and editing, you know? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I wrote my first draft in three months. I meant late in the second year of revisions and editing. And mostly during that second year, I've learned how much I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I've had the good fortune of working with Ben White from Running Wild Press on a couple of projects that I've uh, worked on. I've got a short story coming out in their anthology in October. Mm. And uh, I've worked with Trisha Humphrey, a great okay. editor, uh, who has helped me a whole lot working on my novel. But like I said, I've learned more what I don't know. And mm -hmm. for me, at my age and, and everything, it's uh, it's kind of a little bit of a bummer just how much <laughs> how much learning I have yet to do. You know, wow. if you run into that, you feel that. pretty comfortable <laughs> going into writing. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Did you run into that where you like realize as you write, gee, there's all of this, you know, editing related stuff that I haven't got a clue. Uh, did you run into that or having your educational background, it was a little smoother? I've come to terms, especially in the past couple of years, I found having children helped with this because you really face the realities of your limitations. And I'm okay with knowing that I'm I joke and I say I'm not a good writer, but I love writing and I'll always write. So no matter <laughs> how, <laughs> because some some of the things I write, I read back on and you know that's rough and that's raw and without the revisions. Um, that's what I mean by when I say I'm not a good writer. I am not keen on grammar <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a good speller. And those are aspects of myself I accept, I've come to accept. Mm -hmm. um, and I accept, for instance, that my style of writing won't always fit in certain niches. So mm -hmm. I don't, even though I was potentially striving to become a professor and be more academic, <clears throat> that won't be me. I know that. So I found having children really helped to face and have those confrontations with yourself. Uh -huh. The writing's never finished. You can always go back and it's, it's organic. You can always want to change it. Mm -hmm. So I think I relate with you. Um, in terms of that of, and I commend you for having the bravery to sit down to a blank page <laughs> yeah I'll tell you the truth from my background I've been an entrepreneur all my life I've run construction companies taxi cab businesses you know I've run a bunch of little small businesses mm -hmm. and my education was majoring in accounting so I came into writing completely unprepared you know <laughs> when my editor says this is disjointed or this is a disconnect I haven't got a clue what she's talking about. You know, she has to spell it out like I was a little child because I. You're very technical. There's technical terminology for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I can add two and two and almost always get the right answer. <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> I find even teaching, I find actually teaching English helps with that. That balances out my weaknesses because I need to know that terminology for students mm -hmm. so there are times where I'm googling and I'm looking back through my notes from university to make sure I have that right terminology for students mm -hmm. for myself in my creative space no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta tell you oh, I, think I think it's so fascinating because I write horror thriller and fantasy 
Mm -hmm. Right through those three genres. Like I said, answer purely from my imagination. I'll get an idea and poof, I'll just run with it. Yeah. And uh, you're writing historical fiction, which I have a little understanding, you know, but the word fiction. Okay, what's well, tripping me out and really fascinating. <laughs> oh, I'm finding this very fascinating. I, I imagine the audience too. Your historical fiction, Wretched, mm -hmm. is actually based on real things that really happened with real people in your family tree, right? Yes. Oh, yes. it's totally fascinating. That, that sounds really cool. And mm -hmm. I can see where a lot of research would be required. Yes. But when one reads this fiction tale, they're going to get so much insight from the fact that this is like really based on real stuff that really happened. It's not, you know, it's not me with my purple people eater in my imagination. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it sounds so cool, though. It really there's, a res there's a responsibility with that, though. Um, I have had I did have a person years ago tell me when I sort of gave a synopsis of what I was doing and what I was writing. And this was a person within the community. And they said, that's your grandmother's story. Uh -huh. And your grandmother should tell that. And I had to, to go away from that encounter. And I had to really sit and think about that. Uh -huh. um, and as my, and that would have been maybe six, seven, eight years ago. Uh -huh. um, as I continued writing, I realized, no, this is, this is my story too. Yeah. And I have a responsibility for my children. And I have, I, I know there's been parts of the story for my grandmother that I've been able to tell that she couldn't during her time of being alive because of the social expectations and gender constructs, um, obligation and loyalty to family. Uh, I don't know who <laughs> said that to you, but my response would be very straightforward and simple. Not everyone wants to write a memoir, you know, no. not everyone, especially if it's something traumatic, wants to revisit that, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, the story very well may need to be told. Mm -hmm. but it's entirely likely that your grandmother wouldn't want to deal with going back and dealing with all of that again. You know, Titanic was a really interesting movie, but not everyone would go back in time and relive some of the things they've been through. And, you know, so I would have told that person, you know, grandma didn't want to write a memoir and go away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm sure... I'm sure my answer, I think I was silent and then, you know, they, they yeah. knew how I felt, but she, my grandmother, she was a beautiful storyteller. Her, her strength was, was uh, verbal mm -hmm. and my strength was writing. She was actually a writer too. And I do have some of her writing. I have a short story and she used to always tell a story that she won a writing contest when she was 11 in Belgium and she got to go stay in a castle. And wow. I have, yeah, I've had, she was an interesting woman. She had, I mean, every time you sat down at the table with her, it's, you almost felt like you were sitting and watching a movie wow. um, and the story would change each time. So I, I convey that as well mm -hmm. as the idea and fascination with unreliable narrators as well. And the beauty of that, because the story changes each time it's organic, it's alive. And, uh, I know that that memory stayed with her of the writing. So when she knew that I was writing, she was always supportive of that. Um, and the way that Wretched traces this relationship between a grandmother and the granddaughter, pieces of evidence start to come out of the woodwork because um, it might tie into your next question about Wretched that the novel started, a part of the novel started where I I lived with her, I lived in her basement, and I came across one day um, in a clay canister. There was two stars of David. There were two cloth stars of David, and these were the cloth stars that they would sew on the shirts mm -hmm. um, to give identification that the person was Jewish. And he, David did not wear his stars. They were never sewed on to clothing. And I took these stars upstairs, and I said, I found this. And this is when she started telling me. And, you know, once she started telling me, it opened up, and I think it was... Finally, a time in her life where someone would be able to listen to this part of her story because she had to keep it secret. Mm -hmm. So it was, she had a picture of him in her, in her studio. Um, and she said he never wore the stars because he was, he, he stayed hidden and she was a part of him staying hidden. Um, and 
they were they were they managed to be able to survive parts maybe four years three years of occupied brussels with him staying hidden and then eventually he was found out and he was taken to an internment camp um and he escaped the internment camp he escaped a freight car um, and there's historical evidence to back this up and i actually just read a novel um that depicts this, um, these historical events, and I'll put the, I'll give you the information for that novel. Um, I just yeah. reviewed. Um, but he escaped, and then he was recaptured. And when he was recaptured, he was sent to Auschwitz. Um, and she didn't know what happened to him until after the war. She met his sister on a streetcar, and she asked about him. And the sister said he did not survive. Um, and then my grandma brought out the papers from the internment camps and she brought the, um, and these are the documentation I showed you that are in German. Mm -hmm. And he wrote letters to her from the camp and he was asking for things for her to bring. But in those letters, he had a coded message and he was asking for her to bring false identification papers wow. because he wanted to break out and he wanted to escape. And just as you know a teenager who had grown up in canada you know the 90s early 2000s i was just sitting and being confronted with this history um, I, I felt like it was an obligation for her because this part of her story was she had silenced it well i don't want to do it but i'm afraid <laughs> we'll have to shift gears a little because i know i thought <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, i'm gonna go ahead and jump forward because uh, I feel this is an important part of my show. Uh, yeah. The audience comes to see the star, the guest, the person who is very, very interesting in bringing new things to the reading world. And I want to make sure that they get a chance to hear from you. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to sort of hush and drink my coffee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are not censored in any way. You can share with the audience any website, uh, social media contact, any anything you want to share. And... Uh, you know, say hello to the audience. Okay. First, I want to thank Running Wild Press uh, for accepting my manuscript. I look forward to working with Ben White, uh, who will be my editor. And I also want to personally thank Lisa Kashner um, um, with Running Wild Press um, and taking the chance with my manuscript. Um, I can be found on Instagram and Twitter. Um, my handle is at Hamartia and I, I'll spell that out. It's all one word. I can have a whole conversation about how that handle came to be, mm -hmm. um, but it's H-A-M-A-R-T-I-A-A-N-D-I, -A -A um, and I think that's what I would share because there's so much more, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be sure to put any, you know, please send me links to any of your works, oh, your, perfect. Website, your social media contacts. Uh, send me the links to those, and I'll put them down in the description so that the audience, especially after seeing this video, they're going to want to know more. So okay. it'll be fun to put those links down there. And then I hope that when you get your actual release date, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, Running Wild Press is really cool about letting you know well ahead of time, you know, okay. uh, especially when you get your cover for your book. If you mm -hmm. like, you can certainly come back on the show and we'll promote your book and we'll know yeah. more. We'll have the cover. We'll be able to do a, a better presentation on Wretched because it deserves more than we can do right this minute, you know. So if you would like, you certainly can come back on the show. Thank you. At that time and we'll promote the heck out of that book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to do my little show. Um I don't have a super duper bunch of subscribers. I really don't know how that works yet. Uh, but I do know a lot of people see my show. I've got some super great writer friends. You know, I hope I can count you amongst them as we get to know each other. And, uh, you know, like I'll post something and my writer friends will repost it and their friends will repost it. So, you know, I feel that we really can promote a book and, and get it out there for people to see in kind of a unique way, you know. And uh, so, like I said, it, when, when you feel ready, uh, when, when Lisa Kastner thinks it's a good time, when you have your cover, just contact me and let me know. And by golly, we'll make the best video we can to promote you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, well, again, thank you so much for doing the show. It's been a real pleasure to meet you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs>